Hi everyone, and welcome to this special Field of Dreams edition of Corvette Nation. I'm Bill Stevens with Maria Prekages, and we're here at the 20th anniversary celebration of Corvette Fun Fest at the headquarters of Mid-America Motor Works in Effingham, Illinois. And trust me when I tell you, this is one of the must-go events for any Corvette owner anywhere in the world. But explain the Field of Dreams reference. Well, not far from where we're standing, there is an enormous field with thousands upon thousands of Corvettes with over 50,000 Corvette fanatics. They're all here because of their great love affair with America's favorite sports car. Yeah, in fact, there are people from six foreign countries that have made it here this weekend. But unlike the movie, we're gonna invite you with us. There's a lot to see, so follow us right now. I'm here with the man himself, the lead cheerleader, Mike Yeager and Mike Funfest. Wow, is all I can say. Explain 204060. Numbers. <laughs> <laughs> 20 is our, this is our 20th annual Corvette Funfest. 40 is Mid-America's 40th year in business. And 60 is the birthday of the Corvette. Well, how <laughs> did this all start? Well, this started as let's invite some of our area customers in for a party. That was in 1994. We had 300 Corvettes show up, about 1,200 people. And I got the most wonderful letters of people saying, gee, this was fun, this was like a festival, this was like a party in the backyard. And we go, well, if we do it again, we're gonna call it Fun Fest. And guess what? Roll forward 20 years, and we've got thousands of Corvettes coming through the gates, thousands and thousands of smiling people. And this, to me, this is, just the, the greatest Corvette event, the greatest customers come here having a great time, and today we have super weather. What does it make you feel when you see these thousands and thousands of Corvettes, fans, customers, everyone coming, and it's basically you're giving this party for them? You know, how it makes me feel is grateful, fortunate. Uh, you know, I have wonderful customers, wonderful friends. Uh, the stories I hear from customers, you were with me a while ago and the lady came up and said, I've been here since the mid-90s, which means probably 18 to 20 years, and uh, they just keep coming back. And, you know, that's when you know you have friends. You know, we're a business, but we're a business of friends. Well, and the one thing that I keep hearing is that it's a family. And not just your family works so hard to put this on, but the extended family for anyone who owns a Corvette or loves a Corvette, young and old. Well, if you have a Corvette, you're in our family. How else can I put it? And this is a good, uh, good witness of that. Look around us today. And we're standing in front of this beautiful new C7 Stingray. Did you not know that that was your gift for coming oh, here to Corvette so Fun I Fest? I knew for some reason. <laughs> there Fun you go. Fest, you, if you haven't been, you have to check it out. It's amazing. I, I agree. Hey, one of the real highlights here at Fun Fest at Mid-America Motor Works is the Fun Run. It's something that everybody looks forward to because it really captures the spirit of what the Corvette experience is all about. Mike Yeager, he's the man at the top at Mid-America. He's got Tom Hill, quality engineering manager from the Bowling Green Corvette plant, riding shotgun. And what is the Fun Run? Well, it's going to be fun for me because I'm in the new seventh generation Corvette, but it's a 15-mile road tour through central Illinois 
we're going to end up in downtown Effingham with about 650 Corvettes. That equates to about 1,300 smiling Corvette owners. <laughs> well, the road beckons. Let's roll. We're out of here. All right, let's catch up with Maria, who's in downtown Effingham, where the fun run comes to a conclusion. As you can see, all the Corvettes are rolling into downtown. Over 650 of them. It's right after the 15 mile fun run, and it's just a part of downtown Effingham throwing one big welcome party for Fun Fest. John Zandi has just completed the 15 mile fun run. Why do you participate in this great event? It's just a lot of fun, as the name implies, and uh, you get to see a lot of Corvettes out on the road, and which is where they belong, it's on the road. And uh, sometimes it gets a little exciting, you know, trying to catch up after a long, slow, and that makes it fun too. We're standing in front of your beautiful car. Thank you. It's mostly a 78 Corvette, right. explain. Well, I use a lot of parts in it, including some Harley Davidson, from a Thunderbird to a Firebird to a Camaro and a bunch of other stuff, including uh, some louvers that I took out of a snowmobile. In fact, the only thing really that's, that's original in a car are the frame rails, the front and rear glass, and I think one of the keys. That's it. But it still qualifies as a Corvette. Yeah. Thus, you can be here at Fun Fest this weekend. Right. Anita Wilhelm has a very special 2001 Corvette. You are a cancer survivor. Tell me about this Correct. car and how it came to be. I'm a 14-year breast cancer survivor. This car was a 2001 stock Corvette. It had gray interior. It was nasty when we <laughs> bought it. My husband took the whole thing apart. The whole thing's been repainted. The seats were done by Mid-America. Almost everybody that has, has had something to do with this car has had breast cancer in their family. What do you love about this event, besides showing off your great car and the cause behind it? Oh, just being with all of our friends and all the good times we have. A great car and a great cause behind it, all here at Fun Fest. Every year we look forward to this because uh, it brings people from all areas of the country, uh, especially, uh, you know, we've had them from both coasts. Uh, and, and actually as far away as Texas and, and north to Canada even uh, here. There are probably uh, 40,000 people that come into our city that weren't here yesterday. Each year I get to select a Corvette that's my favorite. Uh, that's not always very easy because there are so many that I like. Uh, this year I was able to make my selection fairly quickly. I, I chose a 1961 that's candy apple red with a white insert. Uh, actually, the interesting thing about this is this vehicle, the owner has only owned it for two years and has completely renovated it during that time period and made it beautiful.
And welcome back to Corvette Nation. You know, a Corvette collection can be any size and any combination of color, body styles, and power plants. It's obviously up to the individual collector and his or her financial ability to build a collection, of course. But one thing remains certain. If you buy rare, documented Corvettes with a rich history of racing, you don't have to have a big collection to collect a big payoff at auction time. When Meekum Auction staged its third annual event in Dallas, a relatively small collection of Corvettes turned everyone's head as they crossed the block. And one of them shattered a sales record for the purchase price of a Corvette at a public auction. The 10 car collection of Corpus Christi, Texas owner Buddy Heron was on view while awaiting a trip across the auction stage. Only four of the 10 cars were Corvettes, but these weren't just any Corvettes. They included a rare 1957 black airbox roadster. With a production run of only 43, these radio heater delete cars had heavy duty everything, brakes, suspension, steering, and fuel injection. Since fewer than 20 of the original 43 airbox Corvettes are known to exist, and since this one had a detailed drag strip and road racing pedigree, its hammer price brought $290,000. Next in the Heron collection was an equally well-documented 62 Corvette with only 4,900 miles on the odometer since new. A factory original triple black car, it came equipped with the top power plant available that year, a fuel-injected 360 horsepower small block V8. Winner of virtually every top award available to an historic Corvette, bidding was spirited as this special shocks and brakes equipped convertible was sold at $150,000. The third of the Buddy Heron Corvettes was a 10th anniversary split window coupe. More to the point, it's one of only 199 of the 10,000 coupes that year to bear the RPO Z06 designation. The Z06 package included all kinds of options like stiffer springs, stabilizer bars, metallic brakes, and of course, fuel injection. Options that said to anyone at the time, this car was race ready. Only three red red Z06s were ever produced and the Meekum auctioneer hammered the sale at a cool quarter million dollars. But when Buddy and Nova Heron drove a 67 Marlboro Maroon convertible onto the stage in Dallas, several thousand sets of eyes were glued to the scene. This was no run of the mill 67 big block. It was a legendary L88. One of 20 produced in that first year, it was quietly offered by GM to Corvette aficionados back then who took the car straight to the racetrack after delivery and usually won, and for good reason. While the car's 427 cubic inch engine officially delivered 430 horsepower to the rear wheels, Track jockeys soon discovered it actually dynoed at about 560 horsepower. The equipment, history, documentation, and honors this car brought to the auction stage read like an action suspense novel but the real suspense came during the final frantic moments before the auctioneer declared it sold. Third and final call, ladies and gentlemen, Texas makes some noise, sold, $3,200,000 better sold, $3,200,000 sold. With a $3.2 million hammer price and an additional quarter million dollars in buyer's premiums, it's obvious the bar has been raised very high for future L88 sales. But it may be some comfort to know for collectors in Texas that the buyer of that record-breaking 67 L88 is from Dallas, so the car likely will remain in the state. Stay with us now. Corvette Nation continues in just a moment.
we're in one of the busiest areas here at FunFest. This is the installed dome, and it is what it sounds like. It's a huge dome where Corvette owners can come in and purchase parts and have them installed by experts. This is Nick McGrath from Straight Line Performance, and this 2013 Corvette Grand Sport behind me, pretty powerful car when it comes from the factory. What are you doing to it? We're installing an E4 supercharger made by Edelbrock Company, putting it to boost it to about 599 crank horsepower. <laughs> now this car made 436 crank horsepower from the factory already, so it's pretty stout. But the added horsepower of this kit should uh, get them around town a little quicker. Walk us through the process itself. How involved is it to get the supercharger on this engine? Um, it is a, a, an expert install. Um, you'd have to have the proper tools, lift, and everything to do it. But self-explanatory for somebody who knows what they're doing, skilled mechanics to install it, pull the intake off, pull the front fascia off, and, and bolt it on. It is truly a bolt-on kit. The front fascia is off. Why do you have to take it off the car? You have to pull it off for the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is a crucial part of the install that actually helps cool the supercharger down. It runs its own cooling system, has its own reservoir, keeps the supercharger cool, which also keeps the engine cool. And to do this entire installation, about how much time are we talk? Roughly eight or nine hours. And that's it? That's it. One more question. Sure. When it's done, do I get a ride? In? You certainly do. Well, a lot of people get the chance to ride in a C7 Corvette, but how many get the chance to ride with Tom Hill, the engineering manager at the Bowling Green Corvette Assembly Plant? This is really the ultimate Corvette, Tom, and I guess sitting still is fabulous enough, but why don't you show me what you got? Well, let's see what we can do here. We're probably going to want to turn this on the sport mode so we can open the exhaust up, make it sound more like a Corvette. I like how you think. Yeah, the, uh, our customers like the noise as much as anything else. And uh, when they drive their Corvette, they want everyone to hear them coming and going. What's the first thing somebody's going to notice about driving a C7 after driving maybe other generations of Corvettes? Everything about this car is stiffer. Everything is tighter. The fits are tighter. The suspension feels better. It feels like it's, it does everything it's supposed to do immediately without having that additional rebound that you get in a, a, a weaker structured car. How much of this car is 100% new compared to the C6? We basically, we didn't carry anything over except nuts, bolts, and screws in this latch right here in the back of the car. Everything else in the car is new. It's, there's nothing that would interchange with the C6. Uh, and we've never done that. That is very high risk. You change everything. We normally will carry over an engine or transmissions or some of the major components so that we reduce the risk. This car, we changed everything. And we knew that there was a lot on the, on the line when you do that because all it takes is one major component to fail and you got a problem. Now we've, we've really stepped it up because we've got more than just horsepower. Now we've got usable horsepower. We've got a suspension, we've got a drivetrain, we've got a structure that can really utilize that horsepower at the rear wheels, which is where you want it, and keep the car planted and on the ground. And on top of all that, we've got a more luxurious, quiet interior than we've ever had. The shift point changes because we're in the sport mode. If it was in the touring mode, it would have changed gears at a lower RPM. So with all the controls that we have on this car now, with, with the, the driving mode selection, the personality completely changes on every individual system, from steering, exhaust, transmission, suspension, braking, even the cluster. You know, and of course the other thing is we, I've got paddle shifts, so if I want to take over on this, I can take control of paddle shifts here right now. And the car just wakes up because now I can control. 
control the RPMs. I can get it where I want it. Uh, autocross guys actually now like the paddle shift better than the, uh, the manual transmissions because it's simpler. So I guess it's safe to say this is the best Corvette ever built. No question in my mind. Don't get me wrong, I've got a 67 Corvette and my all-time favorite recent car is a 2013 427 convertible. That is that is a keeper, but uh, I, this car's better.